Jesus said to his disciples, a rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, what is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, what shall I do? Now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me, I, I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do so that when I'm removed from their stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, how much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here's your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for 50. Then to another the steward said, and how much you do you not, and you, how much do you owe? And he replied, 100 course of wheat. The steward said to him, here's your promissory note, write one for 80. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of the light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If, therefore, you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <clears throat> So this is one of those Gospels that has to be read again and again and maybe again to get to the heart. I know Jesus told his disciples parables to make his message easier to understand, but sometimes, why is it always such a challenge for us to use our money and our possessions wisely? In the reading, Jesus seemed to, to praise a steward, his business manager, who misused his employer's money. What did the steward do that made Jesus praise him? He was responsible for managing his, his wealthy landowner's property. He very likely was overcharging his master's tenants for the use of their land and then keeping more than his fair share of the commission. When the landowner discovered the steward's dishonest practice, he immediately fired him, leaving him penniless and ashamed and, and having to beg and do manual work. But before the news of his dismissal becomes public knowledge, the shrewd steward strikes a deal with his master's debtors. In discounting their debts, he was probably giving up his generous and crooked commission. Such a deal won him great favor with the debtors. And since he acted as the landowner's chief financial officer, such a deal made his master look very generous toward those who owed him money. Surely, everyone would praise such a generous landowner as the town hero since the master could not undo the steward's reduction of the debts without losing face and making his debtors resent him, he praised the steward for making him seem to be generous and merciful. See, so Jesus obviously thought that the example of a very clever steward would be a perfect illustration for a spiritual lesson about the kingdom of God. So what is the point of this parable? The dishonest steward is commended for his shrewd ability to secure the master's position and reputation in the community. The original meaning of shrewdness is foresight. A shrewd person grasps a critical situation with resolution, determination, and foresight to avoid serious loss or disaster. You know, often when we hear this parable, we become confused or perplexed. Jesus is warning to those who, who would follow him on the road to heaven not to place too much importance on earthly things, and that's applicable to all of us. Some of us may feel that this warning was for millionaires or, or wealthy CEOs. Mm -mm. There was not a single millionaire among his listeners. He meant it for all of us, and what he warned against was not the 
just acquisition of the world's goods, but their unjust acquisition and the dishonest use of them, even if they were justly acquired. This story reveals the depth of trust which God has given each of us by trusting us with life and free will. In the parable, the master commended the dishonest servant for acting prudently. The prudent behavior was even more, more important than even the selfish servant's dishonesty. The servant had been entrusted by the master with great power and evidently had been caught abusing it. But in one final attempt to secure his future security, he technically abused that power even further. Is it possible that the image of the dishonest steward is an image of us in ordinary life? We're probably not dishonest, we're not criminals, but are we striving to be as responsible with our lives as we should be? Do we have the foresight to avoid our own potential disasters? All of that being said, Jesus is concerned here with something more critical than financial crisis. His concern is that we avert spiritual crisis and personal disaster through the exercise of faith and foresight. If we as Christians would only expend as much foresight and energy to spiritual matters which have eternal consequences as much as we do to matters which have earthly consequences, then we'd be truly better off both in this life and in the age to come. True wealth consists not only in what we keep, but in what we give away. Our gifts and our possessions are a great responsibility. The Lord expects us to use them honestly and responsibly and to put them at the service of Him and the service of others. We are God's servants and all that we have belongs to Him. He expects good return on what He gives us. God loves generosity and He rewards those who share His gifts with others. The Pharisees, however, had no room for generosity in their hearts. The Gospel of Luke tells us that they were lovers of money. Love of money and wealth crowd out the love of God and love of neighbor. Jesus makes it clear that our hearts must either be possessed by God's love or our hearts will be possessed by the love of something else. Remember gratitude. Being grateful for what we have gives us the ability to be even more generous. We're serving God, not money. God will be waiting for us where there is no money, where what matters is the good use of what we made of our time and our share of this world's goods while we were able. And in the morning when we rise, we give thanks for the new day and all that he holds in store for us. And in the evening, we acknowledge him for his protection, his providence, his wisdom, his guidance, and his will, and for his mercy and forgiveness. Lord, all I have is a gift from you. May I love you freely and generously with all I possess. Help me to be a wise and faithful steward of my resources, including the use of my time, my money, and my possessions. Amen.